Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am very excited, people, to release a part three. I'm becoming convinced that these stones are a stone dough baking technology. We're going to see further evidences for this in the stones themselves, uh, which I hope you will find most, uh, most agreeable and most interesting. We're going to offer an explanation for this. I think I know what this is. Um, and, and how these how these came to be, because it's you can't just cut them and lay them like that. No builder can do that, but you can if you're baking them, which is so interesting, so very interesting. Um, I'm I'm no longer, and, and this is I have to tell you the first time since 2017 um, that I'm really convinced that that you know we're, we're onto something finally. And I, I although there, there are geopolymer people out there, I and and I started talking about this um, on YouTube a long time ago. Um, you know, that word, it, it does relate more to Davidovitz's work with the, the limestone of the Giza pyramid. Um, here we're, we're looking at uh, something else, something that's been puffed up, something something different. So I, I, I want to employ the word stone dough. We are looking at stone dough technology. And uh, this is just phenomenal. Here we have a break of sorts this is what this actually occurs in bread making and because i've been experimenting with breads and, and some bakers have been chiming in they've been saying yes uh, some 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 bread can turn as hard as stone and that's because the the bread the, the 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 baker's bread has all these emulsifiers and other salts which have been added which are actually used <laughs> um uh, in concrete and stone making which is very interesting they have these additives we'll get onto the additives in a second very interesting um, th this kind of eruption has occurred, I believe, because they were not able to pat it down because it was laid vertically and, and it has just erupted while it was expanding. And they've tried their best to patch it up, to pat it down, but because it's on a vertical surface, because you wouldn't have been able to lay this on the ground. This was, this was baked in position if it was baked, if it was baked, I, I'm not, I'm not totally convinced, but I'm 99% there. Uh, and we see that in um, bread making. So let's uh, let's go to that page down. Ah, oh, yes. So there's the eruption um, that occurs, and these occurs in, in um, especially all the time in, when you're making a quick bread. This is a quick bread. Uh, this is not mine. I just found this online. A quick gingerbread. So you can put anything you want in a quick bread. It's like a cake. Um, you usually don't need to, unless you put butter in there. You don't really need to, to knead it uh, very much at all. Um, you, you, it's like a, a cake-like mixture. You put it in the mold, it rises because, and it, you don't need to pre-rise it because you're relying usually on the baking soda slash baking powder or baking soda slash tartaric acid or baking soda alone or any other, uh, any other thing which can leave and, uh, and turn into a dough. So, um, that is an explanation for, for, for those. And, uh, some people have said, oh, you know, um, Oh, is it a is it a laser? Is it a what, what was that thing on the stone? Is it is it you know a sol cosmic burst, solar burst? Um, simple explanation. It's a stone dough. And um, I recently had a friend uh, who went to um, he went all over, and I asked him to get onto the top of um, uh, Saxaquaman to look at the uh, vitrification that uh, Eric von Daniken was talking about, and he said he couldn't find any. So uh, the vitrification thing might be overplayed. Uh, a lot, but there is still possible scope that there, there was some vitrification somewhere. This is supposedly a photo of the vitrification, and I have to say it's a bread making thing as well because what you do is you just glaze it, and it's for pottery as well. You glaze it, and I'm seeing the same things in the bread making industry that we're seeing in the stone making industry. The same principles were applied to the stone making industry. So, this is really stone leaven or stone loaf or stone dough. Simple as that. And, and it's the same, it's literally the same substances, the same chemicals. We'll get onto the chemicals pretty soon. Um, and it's usually eggs and things that make it really shiny, the protein in the egg. Um, you can try with milk or, or with water even, just with water. Uh, it doesn't work uh, that well. Um, that's for interest sake, because I don't think I've seen too much of this on YouTube. That's apparently a, um, there's one, uh, there's one guy who's who's doing a lot of work on this, and he says it's a it's an abacus, and he's worked out how it works back in 2010. So if that is in fact a stone abacus, um, then the walls, in a sense, are also mathematical displays of a sort. 
Oh, here we go. Okay, so uh, let's get on to this. So this is a, a 19th century book of formulas, a cyclopedia. And these cyclopedias, I highly recommend you look them up. Um, they tell you how to make anything. Unfortunately, they don't... Like, I have... They have a lot of recipes in them. Unfortunately, they don't really tell you how to make stone. And this is this is something that really bugs me because no matter how far back I go, I've shown you the, 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 the Mahabharata, the, the Iliad, they don't tell you how it's done either. They don't know. Even back in 3,000 years ago, they don't know how these were done. So this is really bu bugging me and it makes me think... These these walls are, are really old, really old, and and not only are they really old, but something's actually wiped out the people who created them. They're not just wiped out by old age. All their knowledge, all their science is gone. Uh, a catastrophe has occurred. But what we're looking at here is that um, among I'm just going to read this to you. So, among the principal substances which have been used to adulterate wheat flour and bread are the following alum um, now alum is a, is a slightly uh, a toxic uh, 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 salt uh, ammonia beans bone dust chalk clay copper sulfate lime magnesia zinc sulfate starch soda rice potatoes potash plaster of paris and what these things are these are used to turn a very inferior flour, and notice it's the it's the it's the the the, the bad version of um, add additive, which is adulterate the bad version of additive. They have adulterated bad flour and turn it into something that performs into a kind of baker's flour. So they're saying the London bread flour is just is is, is usually garbage and it's usually full of these additives, uh, which are not necessarily good good things to put in bread. Of the above, uh, those marked with the star are very frequently used, and those marked the double star, almost universally so. So what it's saying is um, these things can be used to, to leaven the loaf, and they can also be used in the mineral industry as well, um, to, 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 I believe, um, to, because they just create air bubbles. It's the same chemical reaction. So uh, according to Mr. Acum, the smallest quantity of alum that can be employed with effect to produce a white, light, and porous bread from the inferior kinds of flour is from three to four ounces to a sack of flour weighing, 200, weighing 280 pounds. And uh, Dr. Markham states in his considerations to the ingredients used in the adulteration of flour and bread that the ordinary bread of the London baker is made of one sack of five bushels of flour, eight ounces of alum, four pounds of salt, gall of yeast and three gallons of water. Alkaline substances as the carbonates of ammonia, soda and potash are added to realize the important consideration of producing light and porous bread from spoiled or what is technically called sour flour. The first salt becomes temporarily converted into a gaseous substance during the operation of baking, causing the dough to swell up into air bubbles, which carry before them the stiff dough, and thus renders it light and porous. The salt itself is at the same time, for the most part, volatilized during the operation of baking. Alum is added not only with a like intention, but to enable the dough to carry more water. Okay, so... We not only know how to create the air bubbles, we know how to make it more watery in order to, 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 to make it more puffy, to increase the size. And there is, to my view, there is no reason you cannot employ the same chemicals in stone dough making to turn the, 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 the normal geopolymer into a kind of rising leavened dough stone. And this goes on and on. There we go. That's from from a YouTuber. We can we can create glazes which can can appear to be vitrified. They don't have to be vitrified by heat. That's just one way of doing it. This is a kind of glaze as used in pottery. And here we see some something very interesting. I saw this photo. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it appears to be a nighttime picture from Cuzco. I don't know if it is or not. But if it is, the stones are quite skinny. They actually we see that they're actually quite thin. Um, this stone is, yeah, you can see that the stones are very skinny because if they, if they were huge boulders, you wouldn't be able to get them to where they were. They have to be skinny. Of course, um, skinny would enable them to be naturally carved, but then that doesn't explain the nubs. Now let's explain, let's try and explain the nubs. If this was laid all out in, on the ground as I proposed and then risen, um, you'd have to lever them out of the mold. Could there have been wood 
coming out of here and and when it was set well, when the, the outer surface was set or mostly set you would then um, try and lever it out of the mold before it fully set and you couldn't remove uh, the, the wood anymore or the wooden frame that you clambered over to climb over this if this was lying on the ground. But then when you remove that, that piece of wood, and, and that would explain why these are rounded like loaves, um, uh, uh, some, of the, um, un, uh, some of the unsolidified uh, mixture would emerge. It would continue to rise independently and you would get this effect. Either that or it's stone stitching, as I mentioned before, internal stone welding in, in, in earlier videos. It could be something like that too. But I think this is just, just further risen stone dough after they've removed the frame, um, uh, 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 the frame of molds and overlays around this wall. And I think that's what it is. That, it's as simple as that. And some etymologies. So let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we expand that. What does it look like? Okay, that seems to be working. Okay, so um, my etymologies may, and this is how I do my archaeology. I just look at the, the words. And my etymologies, uh, for example, the other day we saw that, you know, those, those um, uh, you know, those Inca, Inca walls and they have water emerging from them and water, well, and well, well, wall, they're almost the same word, but anyway. My etymologies may agree or disagree with etymologies which usually don't offer a solution. And for most of these, there is no official etymology. They just don't know. They, they think a leaf or loaf might be from, from the Germanic half where you would cut a loaf into halves. Yeah, it's possible. Um, leaven. So loaf and leaven seem to be the same thing. Leaven in the 19th century means dough. Um, so uh, something that rises because not all breads rise. The pan breads don't necessarily rise. Um, it's something that levitates. It's it's a loaf, and it's leaf shaped. Does it leave the ground as if it puffs up? And love is like flying through the air. Bread is is brewing. That's what they say. But it's also it's also a broth. It's a mix. Cake is something that's caged, and it's obviously something that swells. We know that. Um, pudding. I think it means something made in a pot. And a pot. What does that mean? It's something that's round. Hence, you have pottery, which is usually in the very old times. It's it's it, it's always a round object because it's always made on a wheel. And there we go. Okay, thank you for watching part three. I think we've explained this. We've explained the nubs, and I think a good theory explains things. I think this is. I am really happy, guys. All right, cheers. Oh yeah, yeah, just a little more. Now some people will be uh, wondering where this, what this book is. Uh, so I'll just show you very, very briefly. Uh, it's called, um, and you can just download these online. It's so easy. There, there's so many of these awesome books. It's called Encyclopedia of Practical Receipts and Collateral Information. Simple as that by uh, Cooley. That's it. And um, you know, it's it's just amazing. And I wanted to show you a bit more. Um, about these uh, these fascinating uh, uh, recipes. So, um, so check this out. This is really cool. It says here that that, that these were adulterated and that it, 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 uh, people were actually caught out. And it gives you tests on how to check bread to see if it's been adulterated with any of these substances. So basically, um, uh, and, and, and they even give case to check for copper, check for magnesia, um, different varieties of bread vary in their quality. Um, so this is, it's really terrible what some of the bakers got up to. It says here, alum is added not only through a like intention, but also able uh, to enable the dough to carry more water. There are several instances of convictions on record of millers and bakers having used gypsum, chalk and pipe clay in the manufacture of their goods. A gentleman lately writing from the north of England says that he found in one sample of flour which he recently examined upwards of 16% gypsum and in another 12% of the same earth. A few years since it was discovered that some of the bakers in France and Belgium added blue vitriol to their dough to make it taste to take more water. In the same way as the English baker uses alum, one ounce of this sulfate was discovered in a quart of water and a wine glass full of this solution added to the water necessary to make about 50, 50 four pound loaves. This enormous crime was soon detected and caused the ruin of its heartless perpetrators. And, 
and it explains how to check for all these things. Uh, it, it says that recently lots of bakers have started using rice in, in the bread and it, it, it enlarges the bread 50% more. It makes 50% more bread and, and there's all sorts of things you can do. And, and um, even back then there was huge, huge bread crime. It was unbelievable. Uh, just incredible. Anyway, guys, uh, so, uh, you know, I'm suggesting we could, we could try some of these substances to leave in stone because, um, I think that would be the, uh, the way it works. It, it's, um, it's, uh, I, I wouldn't call it a strictly, uh, again, I don't call it a, a geopolymer process. It's just, a, it's just all about, um, breaking down the, the, um, the, uh, the, the, the hard rocks into a kind of ash and then reconstituting them really. Bye-bye.